Good morning, YouTube and my Xenoverse, and welcome to our AEW Full Gear Pay-Per-View Predictions video. We got done watching Dynamite about three hours ago. So, live from the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, AEW is doing their first pay-per-view show since starting Dynamite. And from what I seen on AEW yesterday, that's how you're supposed to do a go-home show going into a pay-per-view. The brawl at the end, the 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 promo Cody Rhodes had cut. Uh, this is I can't even go do it. it just this was a, just another good episode of AEW, and it's even better going into this pay per view. Now I see that they added a few matches on here, but we're gonna jump into this match card. We gonna we gonna get right into it. So we got a buy in. You know it's gonna be on a pre show. We got Britt Baker versus B Priestley. Finally, they I mean this has been. B Priestley has been a thorn in, in, in the doctor's side, and it's finally they're finally going one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm glad because this will actually be able to show the people who aren't familiar with B Priestley on what this girl can do on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And she's really good. If you haven't watched her, you're getting in for a treat. Uh, as much, I want B Priestley to win. I'm going with B Priestley to win because I see her as being a top contender for the for the AEW women's division and it's the best way to do that is to beat someone who already fought for the title which is Britt Baker she lost to Rio so I think I think B Priestley is going to be the heel that's going to take the title off of Rio hopefully hopefully I'm, I'm trying to book the scenario in my head in my head after if if she does do it and she you know she can have her beat up all the baby faces have her beat up um sadie gibbs after that or an alley and all the other the baby face girls that they have now which aren't too many because you know AEW doesn't have that many women that's why they keep going out of range to get women from other places just to work on work a night or so so but i'm going with b priestley to avoid the lockjaw and beat the dentist. She's gonna beat the dentist. Next, we got Joey Janela versus Sean Spears. I see this match was just added. This shit was just added. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the match card right now, and I'm like, wait, when did they announce that? And I guess they said they're gonna do that because um because uh Sean Spears was about to I think he he was about to do his whole chairman shtick on Brandon Cutler in their match yesterday. And Joey Janela came out and made the say. And so I'm about to like, Joey Janela, hey, tough guy, you so big, uh, you so big, well, come on, try me, try me. So this, this is, an, I don't know what to really say about that. I really don't. I don't also, and I'm kind of, I don't want to sound 50 50, but both of these guys have something to gain and something to lose. Okay, if I'm, if I'm doing my math correct, I think Sean Spears is, is two and two in singles competition. I think I'm, I'm. I'm not really sure, cause he won last night and he beat Michael Nakazawa on AEW Dark last week, so he has something to gain. And I think Joey Janela is just there. If anything, I, I was still trying to. They're doing that whole Sean Spear stick. I'm surprised MJF didn't get a shot at him, but I think it's doing the right thing because MJF is a heel. There's no other way around. It. MJF's a heel. Um, I'm gonna go with Sean Spears. You know, I'm I'm gonna go with Sean Spears. But this is the reason I I feel kind of like I'm, maybe I'm choosing the wrong person is because Joey Janela hasn't gotten a single victory on AEW television. Period. First match lost to John Moxley, lost to Kenny Omega twice. So is this gonna be his fourth loss? I could be wrong. We gonna we just gonna have to wait and see. Next, we got SoCal Uncensored, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky defending the AEW World Tag Team Championships against the Lucha Brothers and the just added Private Party. Private Party won a bronze medal match against the Dark Order last night to get into this match. This match is going to be very chaotic. I can just say it's going to be chaotic. Because these, this is, you got so much talent, anything that has the, the, the Lucha Brothers is gonna be chaotic. Ray Phoenix, Ray Phoenix is is not human at all. This man does some of the most amazing things I've ever seen in the ring. I have like, and I don't want the I don't want SoCal Uncensored to lose on their first defense. 
But I know eventually the Lucha Brothers are going to be tag team champions. Eventually, I think Private Party is going to be tag team champs. But I'm going with the champions to retain. I don't know how, but I think somehow, I think somehow they're going to retain. I think they're going to retain. Next, we got Riho defending the AEW Women's World Championship against Emi Sakura. I don't even know if Emi Sakura even signed with AEW. She showed up about three times so far in the AEW ring. And, and she actually pinned Riho yesterday on Dynamite. So, I don't see how... She got a championship. I don't. I don't know how she earned this championship, but and they have a small story there. But I'm like, I can't really tell it on television right now. Between the mentor and the student, apparently this Emi Sakura was trained by Rio. I also think she trained she trained Hikaru Shida. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. But this 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 match does have a a story behind it. It does have the, the student and mentor story behind it. But the question is, can the student get past the loss from yesterday and beat her mentor for the title? Because right now, it doesn't seem like the fans were really warmed up to Emi Sakura. I mean, they booed the shit out of her yesterday when she was trying to get him the platforms. They booed the shit out of her. Some of them tried, but it was like... And a lot of people say they just really don't like Emi Sakura. I'm like, she's not bad. She actually has a decent move set, But... I'm going with the champion to retain. Riho is going to retain the AEW Women's World title. That's the right move. I don't think anybody's going to buy this Emi Sakura girl chick as champion. I don't think they'll get behind it. I, I, I don't see it. I do not see it. Next match. We, uh, we got Hangman Adam Page versus the Bastard Pack. Okay, um, I don't think this is the right scenario for Pac to be to lose, and at the same time, don't get me wrong, Adam Hangman Page, he I, right. he's I, right. you know, I mean he has a decent move set, a little bit of charisma. I ain't really too much of a fan of the whole cowboy look, you know, kind of the old town road looking ass, but I think Pac is going to win. And that could probably trigger something in the Hangman, and maybe he turns heel. Um, for some reason, Adam Hangman pays it like he could be more of a better heel than a a baby face. That's just me. I'm, that's just what what the vibe I get from him, and the fact that he's been losing over the course of weeks, both for AEW television, makes it even better for him to just like he can win. He just snaps. Who did he snap on? Who knows? But. I'm going with the bastard pack to do this because it looks like they're slowly trying to build him up. But right now, it's not. I wouldn't think he should be contending for the title yet until it's off of Jericho. You're not going to put Pack in a scenario to lose to Jericho right now in this, in this stage. I mean, whoever the baby face is that's going to beat Jericho, that's who Pac should be, should be feuding with. But other than that, I'm going with Pac to win. And this is going to be another notch on his belt. You feel me? It's, Pac is damn good at what he does. He's damn good at what he does. One thing he does, he should give WWE credit just for something, is for giving him that whole persona. You know, after he came back, after he came back and he had the, the long hair and grew the beard and he became the king of the cruiserweights, that was the birth of the bastard. That was the birth of the Bastard character. And that Bastard character has been one of the best things in professional wrestling, period. This man went undefeated in the independent circuit for that long. For that long. And I want to say, this match was supposed to happen at double or nothing. But they did the match before that. The match was great, too. So this is a, a rematch from that. And we're just going to see how it goes. We're going to see how it goes. I'm going with Pac to win, though. Pac going to lock in that brutalizer, and he going to choke Cowboy out. Straight up. Next, we got the Young Bucks versus Pride and Power. Santana and Ortiz of the Inner Circle. 
This is going to be the match still. This is going to be the show still. I guarantee you. That is match of the evening. That is going to be incredible. Two of the best tag teams in the world. And I think they've, I'm pretty sure they've gone at it before. This is going to be incredible. I don't really don't know what to say about this one. I really don't know what to say. And it's, it's just plain and simple. Santana Ortiz called them, called the um, Bucks out. And that was that. Then they even, they destroyed the poor Brock and... <laughs> Oh, they, put us, they, was like, they destroyed their, their Bucks idols last week by power bombing them off stage. And it's just just to send a message to them. So, but but the young Bucks are in the. I'm glad they are in the position. They're, they want to put other teams over. They put Private Party over during the tag team tournament. Santana and Ortiz are going to win. They are going to win. They're going to beat the Bucks. They're going to beat the Bucks, and, and then I think is they're going to start featuring, they should start featuring Santana and Ortiz in a more predominant tag team role after you beat the Young Bucks. Let them start beating the other tag teams. Let them um, go ahead and destroy the best friends, even though I love the best friends. Orange Cassidy is the truth. Um, let them, the, them and the Lucha Brothers can have another great, fantastic man. Them and Private Party, let them go and and start taking over the tag team division. I think if anybody probably is going to get the tag team titles next, it should be Ortiz and San Ortiz and Santana. Those are the next tag team champions. I I see it that way. If they if they're doing this whole inner circle thing, they want to be booked to look strong, so you got to book the inner circle to look strong and they're going to get the gold as long, I think that should be one of the things as long as Jericho has the gold and the faction stays together, that Ortiz and Santana should be tag team champions. They should get the title. They should get titles next if, if that's how they're going to do this. Jack Jack Swagger, Jake Hager, whatever the fuck you want to call him, has a, still haven't uttered a word, which is absolutely good. He's just the big guy in, in the whole scenario. That fucking brawl, that brawl was insane. That's all I can say. That brawl at the end of the episode was insane. I do it no justice. Go watch it. That was that was definitely made me hype for the pay per view. Next, we got Chris Jericho defending the AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes stated in his promo that if he loses to Jericho, he will never contend for the AEW World Title ever again. He will never do that again. So I'm sorry to say, Cody. You ain't getting another. You will never be. You will never be world heavy. <laughs> you will never be AEW world heavyweight champion because Jericho winning. Jericho is winning. It's just. It makes no sense for Cody Rhodes to win. It makes no sense. They put the title on Jericho for a reason. Jericho is damn good television. From the brawls of these dudes, that which I still don't understand. These the, him and the, the Jericho in the inner circle were at the show. And if they, we have tickets, why? You work here. That means you should be able to get in for free. <laughs> but anyway, Chris Jericho is going to retain the title. Sorry, Cody Rhodes is my man. So this That was the best promo he has ever cut. I can do it no justice. Go listen to that man's promo. See the, the fire and passion that he, he spoke. It was just incredible. That promo was absolutely incredible. It almost made me think, what if he does win? But I don't think he should. He shouldn't. Chris Jericho's going to retain the AEW world title. And, Chris, and Cody Rose will never get another title shot again. Sorry to say that. But even though it doesn't make sense. He said, even though he's, he'll probably be a man of his word. I mean, dude, you're an executive vice president of the, of the whole company. I'm pretty sure you can do what the fuck you want. But he's going to be fair. He's not going to pull a McMahon car and just keep putting himself in this scenario. I guess he's, I don't think he's really putting his, himself in this to make Jericho look like a viable champion because right now Cody Rose has been putting on some of the best matches on the AEW pay-per-views. Hands down. He has been putting on some of the best matches on the pay from Double or Nothing with Dustin, from um, the uh, match at, at, was it Fight for the Fallen? No, was that Fighter Fest? 
Uh, I think it was at Fighter Fest. Well, the one that he fought Darby Allen to the to the finish. The match he had with um with Sean Spears in Chicago at all out. I don't expect anything but a great four star match out of him and Chris Jericho. This is gonna but Jericho ain't losing. Jericho is not losing that title on first defense. Second, sorry. First pay per view defense. There we go. And if this is the match order they got it in, I guess this will be the main event. This match was supposed to happen at all out, but and we're getting it's gonna be at full gear. So we got John Moxley versus Kenny Omega in an unsanctioned lights out match. So apparently Tony Khan didn't sign for this. So they just, they're just gonna go out there and tear each other limb from limb. I don't know what is with their fascinations with barbed wires, but I guess that's what they really wanna wanna bring it to that level. I don't know. Look if this match is going to be brutal. You can see ladders, thumbtacks, a couple of chairs. Some they both going through a table. Both of them are going to go through tables. I can see this. What if they brawl all the way out on the other the arena? There's so many possibilities they could do with this match. We all know how great Kenny Omega is as an in-ring performer. And for him, he's going to, I don't want to say stoop, but he's going to an element that John Moxley made a career out of before going to WWE. Go back to the combat zone wrestling days and when John Moxley was just unhinged and crazy. John Moxley cut a great promo last week too. Let's see, look at these promos that these people are cutting now. They ain't this overscripted bullshit like WWE. I'm like, it's just it just feels more real and they bring a big fight feel to uh, and to their opponents. Uh, now, I'm really 50-50 on this. Um because Kenny Omega just started winning more. He just started winning winning some matches again. He's getting some victories. You know, he's beating Joey Janela twice. And John Moxley is a person who gives no shit. It looks like he gives no shit about anything but hurting people. So I don't even know if... If he wants to win the match, maybe he just wants to beat the hell out of Kenny. Now, I kept saying that Kenny doesn't really need to win like that. Kenny don't need victories like that. But if you look at all the members of the elite, minus Hangman, does have a sub, a, a decent amount of victories. Cody Rhodes, I think, has the most. But, no, Cody Rhodes ain't going to win. Now, also what I was going to say, what if this is the part where MJF finally shows his true colors, and turns on Cody Rhodes. That could happen too. Or they could just have Jericho go out there and beat him clean. Who knows? But anyway, back to Moxley and Omega. Um, man, so I'm trying to think. What does the, this match do for either one of them? What does it do for either one of them? Nor also, I don't sense this ain't signed out. This ain't won't even count against a, re a, re a loss or a win for either one of them on the AEW records. This is them just a blood feud, a literal blood feud. Now, like I said, I don't know what the win does to, to either one of them. I'm a, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Moxley on this one. I'm I think I think Moxley gonna get this win. I mean, it, it I'm gonna say it makes sense, but it kind of makes sense that Kenny Omega was already supposed to be Moxley's first opponent on uh, first opponent coming in. The, the show coming and coming to the going into dynamite that was supposed to be his his first opponent and I'm th and I was thinking if Moxley and Omega did have that match at all out that Moxley probably would have went over so I'm going with Moxley to to get that win and I think that who knows what kind of crazy shit will happen at this at the end of this show who knows. Who knows? I'm still stuck on the Death Rider through the table, through the glass table. That during that what was that two episodes ago, two three weeks ago. That shit was a, that was too funny. I could not stop laughing and replaying seeing Kenny Omega dropped through a glass table from the Death Rider. That was just too funny. But I think that's I'm thinking, thinking that I think overall this show of course, it looks great on paper. So far AEW has delivered on their pay per views. Every pay per view they've had. Have been good, most better than other. I can't even say what's, what's been the best one. I don't want to include All In because All In wasn't under the AEW banner. 
So, and, but that still was the best show of last year. That was that show was amazing. There was no, no, no even consequences on the, on the AE. That was amazing. So far, I can't even say personally what my favorite show has been since they um, since AEW's been on the rise. But this is their first pay per view coming out of the since they had the Dynamite and TNT deal. Since they've been on t television six weeks, and they've literally built this this pay per view up in six weeks. It's like this is great. Why? Right? Like WWE should actually take fucking notes. And like this is how you build a pay per view. Now let's see how you book this pay per view. And I'm pretty sure this pay per view is going to be better than anything WWE has has put on this year. I'm absolutely positive. Crown Jewel was was fucking disgusting, a waste of time. Hell in a Cell. Well, I'm like, uh, we're not going to talk about Hell in a Cell. And I bet you're wondering why did I do a Hell in a Cell, Hell in a Cell pay per view predictions? Why I didn't do a um, Crown? I definitely wasn't going to do no fucking Crown Jewel pay per view predictions. I'm actually kind of mad at myself. I did the Super Showdown one. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? So, uh, but Bucks and Santana Ortiz, that's the match too. I um, refuse to believe otherwise. So, two days. Two days from now, it's going down. Or is it two? Or is it, what is it? I don't know what date it is. I don't give a fuck. It's two days from now. It's, it's yeah, two days from now. AEW, full gear, it's going down. And then another thing, we got TakeOver coming. It's coming here. Chicago, War Games 3. Chicago 3. And I'm actually surprised there's going to be two War Games matches in that. But we're not here to talk about it. We, we will discuss NXT on when it comes to that, when it gets closer to that. But that's it. That's your AEW um, full gear predictions, y'all. Hit that thumbs up. Share this video. Like and subscribe. You know, I, this one guy, he kept asking me um, why I stopped uploading music. I'm not uploading music until it's 1,600 of y'all. 800 of y'all need to sign a petition. 800 of y'all do that, I'll come back. Real talk. I'll come back. I'll I'll release some new stuff. But, but, there is a but. You only get 30 second snippets. You will get no more full beats from me. You want a full, you want to listen to full beats? And if I have y'all 800 people that do petition to come, to, to um, petition me to bring back music, I'm making a patron page. And you have to sign to my patron, and you have to pay to listen to my full beats. You don't like it? I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't need to upload music to y'all. What the fuck do I care? So y'all one of y'all's the ones are the one who wants to listen to my music when I can say no. I'm tired. Of, I didn't like the people stealing my beats and didn't even tell me they were gonna use it. Just as I just look up, just put produced by me, and then look at this, these fucking lame ass niggas who call themselves rappers rapping over my shit. I put a stop to that. I put a stop to it. So that's gonna be that. Y'all want me to make music? It's, it's 1,600 of y'all. Half of y'all sign a petition, and I'll make music again. If not, because I've been asking this for years, if y'all really want me to make music, uh, to put music back on the channel. Petition to do, petition me to, to me to, for me to do it, but none of y'all do it. So it looks like y'all don't want me to upload music. So if y'all don't want me to upload music, I'm not gonna upload music. But anyway, that's AEW full gear. I'm cool to Super Saiyan guy SSG cool. I gotta get ready to make a move to the city in a minute. I'm gonna get at y'all later. Might have some some more fighting game content. I got actually a few King of Fighter videos. I gotta get up to y'all and more Warriors Orochi. I already stated in Warriors Orochi that. I beat the game. I beat the story mode. I, I gotta upload the last two side missions, and then we're gonna go to the DLC missions from there. And then we're gonna start doing chaotic mode and uploading the pandemonium videos. We actually have a pandemonium video ready for after these side missions. So y'all might get that. We also gotta um, record some Dragon Ball Z. PlayStation Plus is um, actually gone right now, which really we don't give a shit about. Um, because that was just cringe, play, playing Street Fighter and cringing off of that and playing Mortal Kombat. So we're going to play other games. You know, we're going to upload some more DC content. Might um, get back on, on Dynasty Warriors also. And like I said, we got Warriors of Rochi coming. But yeah, hit that thumbs up. I'm SSG Coop. Y'all have a great day. Deuces.